Hello, and welcome to this speculative video on Darksiders. As I'm sure some of you are aware, I love the Darksiders series. However, there are some very much unexplained things. And I've gone through all of the Darksiders material that I could find in preparation to Darksiders 3, just so I can know everything, and I've decided to do some theory videos. And some lore videos, maybe. This first one, however, is just speculation and theory. So, as you can see here in the Darksiders comic from 2009, I believe, War is holding Chaos Eater with his left hand. Either that, or it's his right hand and the image has been inverted, but why would that be? It probably wouldn't, so it makes the most sense for it to be in his left hand. And this is just him holding it normally. As you can see here, also from that comic, he stabs left, left, he stabs left-handedly at death, which would imply war was left-handed. But as you can also see in the comic, his left hand gets chopped off, assumedly by war, not war, death, or fury, who had a very different design at this point, much more sexualized. Um, I'm not sure whether I like the change to the current design of this or not, but I'm perfectly happy with it. I just don't know whether I preferred the old design, but I'm definitely happy that they've less sexualized it because obviously the arm is much more practical and I'm not sure, but I'm, it might be her abyssal armor set as she is sanctioned by the council. We'll see. Anywho, yes, so War gets his left arm chopped off, and it doesn't show to grow back. Strife states that he's nowhere near as invulnerable as Death is, and in the Darksiders The Abomination Vault, War doesn't have as good a healing factor as Death, it would seem. Death often states, well I say often, but Death states that he'd be fine if he had a little bit of time to heal and he's more likely to survive being shot by insta-death weapons than war is. So it could just be that he's older, has more experience, more powerful, or it could just be that war's power doesn't really give him regenerative abilities in the same way that deaths apparently does. Which makes sense in the fact that later on in the comic book, we see him with his left hand covered in the gauntlet which he wears in the game. This is something that we hadn't seen him with prior to this point. So, the fact that he has it could mean something. As is shown constantly throughout the games and whatnot, his right hand is, you know, in a gauntlet of some sort and is a lot smaller than his left. His left hand it has the glowy face on the back of it, is huge, and can also apparently be used to store the hearts of the Chosen, potentially, and store souls, and all those other things. Which would lead me to think that potentially, it's not actually just a hand. It's a magical, well not just a gauntlet, it's a magical gauntlet, which makes sense with how he punches with that if you use the Tremor Gauntlet in attacks as shown here. But that's not all. There's more. Um, his gauntlet goes all the way up to his shoulder, or at least past the elbow. Um, not so much on the inside. On the inside you can see some of his flesh, but I don't believe you can see his forearm. And he got, got his arm chopped off about here, if I'm not mistaken. So, I reckon his gauntlet is a prosthetic, and he was actually left-handed. Which would mean, because there is evidence that this comic didn't take place until shortly before the events of Darksiders 1, he's probably still getting used to wielding Chaos Eater right-handed. Which would show that he would, that would explain why he's so much weaker than 
death appears to be, because death, one, is most likely the strongest of the four horsemen, because it's the oldest and is from the first generation of Nephilim, which I'll get into in a separate video, and so he's also had the longest to practice, and two is freaking death. Do I really need to say any more? He's also the leader of the horsemen when the Child Council aren't directly influencing them. So yeah, Death's probably the strongest. So why is, but that, still, why is War so weak? He is the youngest, but I reckon it might be because he's getting used to wielding right-handed. And he was left-handed, but now he's got this gauntlet, it's unwieldy, as most prosthetics would be. He can use it, but he'd prefer to use his actual flesh hand, which is fair enough. And it also explains why the Watcher binds itself to the gauntlet, because the Child Council is effectively War and the other horsemen's boss. So, the boss wants them to fight as effectively as possible. It's most likely more effective to have a massive gauntlet of destruction and soul absorption than a stump. Especially when you are a rider of the apocalypse who meets out judgement. So that's my theory, and the evidence that I was talking about of why this doesn't take place a long time before the events of Darksiders 1, and, well, probably the events of Darksiders 2, the very first events of Darksiders 1, the events of the Darksiders 1 trailer, let's go with that, is that Abaddon has already lost his right eye, which means it takes place after the events of the Abomination Vault. That's step one. And then step two is that in a in the rest of the story, um, War has his has his gauntlet. And in the comic, you see War and Co. travel to Samael's realm before he gets imprisoned on Earth. To say, don't you be starting any trouble. And, well, there's also, at this point, a meeting go on between Abaddon, Azrael, and Orthane. They start colluding around about the same time the horsemen go to visit Samael, as best as I can tell, from this comic. Which would mean... If they've started colluding at this point, they just need to put their plan into action, and then presto, the events of Darksiders 1. So, there are a couple of problems with this, however. Firstly, the validity of the comic as canon is... Mm, at best. Because, one, Fury's design's different. Two, Fury isn't the rider of the black horse in it. As you can clearly see here, she is on a white horse. And as you can clearly listen here, she is the rider of the black horse. Which is yet to be named, and I'm very excited for that. And, well, there's also the fact that in it they give an alternate explanation for the Nephilim's existence. As we know in Darksiders 2, spoilers. If you haven't, you know, played it or whatever, I'm doing a playthrough. So wait till I finish that, go watch it all and come back. Yeah, so Darksiders 2, we have um, Lilith, who created them out of angels and demons and, well, created Abaddon out of angels and demon dust. And then the creation of Abaddon caused the uh, angels and demons to kind of want to procreate with each other, and thus came the Nephilim, the first generation, the firstborn. After which, assumedly, the Nephilim procreated with each other to create the second generation, the others. In the comic, they, they do say that they're one of the first races older than the Archangels, and they're cr the creators 
like warriors. But it would still make sense considering that Lilith can time travel, for one, so can make them out of angels and demons and then go back in time to inject them before the archangels as the creation's warriors, the creator's warriors. Because the creator would obviously have more power than Lilith would, and they slaughtered worlds. That is canonical everywhere. So, it as assuming that is what happened, because that's the only way to make it canon still, even though they got the horse colours wrong. Um, yeah. That is how that could be canon. The horse colours, I don't really get. The change in outfit would make sense, however. That could be just how, you know, Fury day-to-day -day dresses when she's not working. When she gets summoned by the council, she dons the actual armour, like you would, and goes about her day. She'll always carry the weapon, as I'm assuming it's also probably some sort of spellcasting catalyst, as she's a sorceress, mage, person. I don't really know, but I've got to say that if we take the comic book to be canon alongside Darksiders 2 Death's Door, the comic book, and Darksiders The Abomination Vault, the book, and obviously the games, then it would make sense for war, because it's never stated he's right-handed, and it doesn't really specify which hand he uses his weapon in at all, ever. Um, yeah, it would make sense for war to have been left-handed, have his arm chopped off, when he was being a rebellious little kid, because he is the youngest of the living Nephilim. Um, a bit headstrong. Got a prosthetic, but prefers to use his actual arm, so he's now using a right-handed, and stuff like that. Let me know what you think. Uh, obviously, I have no more evidence, really, and it doesn't matter either way, but I think it's interesting to think about. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. And feel free to subscribe and double tap that bell thingamabob if you want to be notified about my videos. Probably don't want to do that though because I, I post a vlog every day which you'll get notified about. So yeah, just check the channel and watch all the Darksiders related content and you're more likely to have it come up in your recommended. Because everyone knows YouTube loves telling you what you want to watch as opposed to letting you decide what you want to watch. Anyway, I will catch you cats on the flip-flop. Goodbye.